What's up guys, Anders here with another video for you. I took a little break, but now I'm back with one juicy patch note video for you. We're gonna cover the PC version of global patch notes as well as the KR patch notes at the end. If you want me to cover console patch notes, let me know in the comments, but from what I can see, not many of you out there. But as always, let's start with the events. We have the Musa and Mewa events for their succession releases. They're exactly the same as the previous succession events. So as long as you level a Musa or a Mewa to 60, you will receive all the items from the event. The new event we're getting is Christmas themed, and if you've been playing video for a while, you're going to recognize it as the Grandpa Cron event. So Santa flies around the major cities in the world. When it snows and drops gifts, you can interact with to get some furniture items and some cosmetics as well as some other stuff. It was okay in the past, but this year they've added the Noel outfit box and the Snow Kid limited pet to the box. That's right, this year they've added pearl items. So if you want that Santa outfit and the snowman pet, this is a good way to try and snag one. Now the chances of them dropping will probably be low, but it's a really good move by Pearl Abyss to include them. The outfit itself has been in the game since 2016, so it makes sense to start giving it away through an event like this. Now, if you're new to the game, understand that the presents that Santa drops are first come, first serve, so you need to be the first one to interact with them to get them. So I recommend using agile characters and classes like Ranger, uh, Ninja, Kunoichi, Musa, Mewa, those quick classes uh, to run around town looking for the drops and have a good chance of getting there first. Uh, you're going to need some luck, so there you go. Good luck. Hopefully you get at least one good item out of that event. It will be going on for a little bit, so you should have some time. Now, I should mention that because uh, these are C patch notes, Southeast Asia, um, we're going over these. Cacao sometimes likes to be a bit of a Grinch and dilute the events that we get. So it could very well be that in NA and EU, we don't actually get the outfit and the pet in the Santa boxes. But I'm hopeful that won't be the case. I'm hopeful that Cacao finds it in their little hearts to actually give us this amazing event over on NA and EU as well. Now, the next event is a farming event uh, every day. You're going to do a daily quest that's going to reward you with a seed. Now you plant and harvest this seed and it's going to net you 20 to 25 cron stones. Very simple and easy to do. More cron stones are always nice. You can do this once a day. Now the next event is the daily login and playtime event where you get snowflakes that you can then trade in for different boxes. Now 150 will give you a fine accessory box, but these days they're not really going for much. So use it for the resources or the black magic crystal box is my opinion and my suggestion to you of how to use these snowflakes. Now the next event, yes, there's more events. This time it's a combination loot event where you can and get different pieces from fishing, gathering, and grinding. You can combine the different pieces for a box and a chance at some items. I got a Nuva box out of one last year. Pretty good event, I have to say. And not as good as this next one, though. Drop rate increases for hards and sharps through gathering for the next two weeks. That means fever time on the weekends. You get double uh, drop rate for hards and sharps. Now you have that forever for two whole weeks. That's really good if you make your income through gathering, which uh, you should. Uh, you're going to be making a lot more money uh, this way through the next two weeks. Really good event for gatherers and life skillers. The Christmas event was also revealed. So Patrigio, the night vendor for Christmas Day only, will sell cron pouches, grandpa gifts, and rare cron boxes, which are essentially shakatu boxes for 30 million silver instead of the typical 50 million silver that we have to pay for shakatu boxes. What does this mean? Well, prepare for a lot of memory fragments to get dumped into the market that day, as well as a lot of accessories from the boxes. The night vendor will also show only three items, nothing else. The Shikatu box item, the Kron pouch, and the Kron gift. Now, even at the cron pouches are really good value since they're one to one like they used to be before the change to cron stone prices. Uh, the cron gift are where things get interesting. So you can get loot scrolls, golden bells, gin crystals, and kama blessings, among other things. The kama blessings are one day duration. Last year they were seven day, and you also got some awakened scrolls. I actually have a video where I spent 10,000 energy on that night vendor so you can look at what to expect and what kind of odds you can expect from that um, this event by looking at that video. Uh, the camera blessings, again, are one day duration. 
Uh, last year there were seven day, so a bit of a nerf, but uh, still very good. Uh, remember, each item shown to you will cost you 50 energy, so you're going to be energy limited with this event. So keep those uh, energy bottles uh, in stock if you really want to go ham on this event. It's very, very good because especially getting those bells is always nice to help you level, especially if you want to go for 62, 63, 64, something crazy like that. Now, finally, on Christmas Day itself, December 25th, we will be receiving an additional gift. Don't know what it is yet, but I assume it's going to be very good considering just how many things they're already giving away this year for the Christmas events. And that's it for the events. Uh, a lot of events, as I said, as for changes, we have the new Musa and Mewa successions. Never really made videos for them. I apologize for that, but Mewa seemed kind of lackluster in my opinion. And Musa did seem to have some potential with the succession. As always with these things, it's going to be interesting to see what Musa and Mewa mains think, not just what I think. And apart from that, we received buffs to the value of trash drops around the world in different grind spots. Nothing crazy though, just uh, a way to help newer players as they grind for money. They added a new loot scroll called the Advanced Loot Scroll which has 100% drop rate and 100% trash drop increase. It lasts for 60 minutes and you can combine two of the normal loot scrolls to get one of these advanced versions. Now, along with this item, they also changed the trash range for Histria to be one to four instead of one to three. So that's a nice little buff for those of us grinding Histria. On top of that, you now need less shining medals of honor to exchange for a loot scroll than before. It's down to 20 from before. It used to cost 25 if you don't know what Shining Medal of Honor is, uh, you get those from Node War. For just participating, you get one. For winning, you get more. Uh, and so on and so forth. Pretty, pretty simple. Pearl Abyss also buffed hunting whales and kalk. Uh, you now get more loot for doing doing those uh, hunting bosses. That's a good thing. Hopefully this means it will revive group hunts again. And the developers also reworked some of the quest rewards. So now you get new accessories and gear that can actually be enhanced and should be overall better than the previous ones offered through quests. You can basically get 11 AP earrings, that's basically a tri-witch earring, uh, 10 AP rings, and 12 AP belts just by questing. Pretty good, really great for those struggling with enhancing or getting gear. And the quests themselves have not really changed, so you still only need to do the suggested and main storylines to get these items, and then you can uh, get the enhancing materials through repeatable quests. We also now have a 50% increase in the value of pearl items in the central marketplace. This also increases their cronstone extraction value, so keep that in mind. We knew about this for a little while now, so that's going into uh, change today. Um, that's pretty much it for the global patch notes, to be honest. Uh, let's take a look at Korea, where the more interesting stuff is happening since uh, they received the new class, Guardian. No idea why this wasn't a global launch, but it may have been due to Korea celebrating their fifth year anniversary. No idea when we're actually going to get it in global. But, you know, we can pray and hope that it's not going to be too far. Hopefully in January, we'll actually get the class. I doubt it's actually going to be this month to be honest. Uh, with Guardian come a slew of events, including the Experience Tag event, much like we just had, it's actually finishing today, uh, the XP Tag event, where you just take your Guardian, you level up your Guardian, and as you level, you can tag another character, and they'll share XP as you level. Pretty nice if you need to level alts or whatever. Uh, you only need to hit level 56 for the leveling events. The rewards are very good, and even give a seven-day value pack, but I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be the same for us, to be honest. Um, we also get the Guardian Token event, which is an exchange event. You, so you gather, you fish, you grind, and you get these Guardian Tokens, which can then be exchanged for Blackstones, Sharp, stuff like that. Uh, Shy also received their composition and band music play feature, so you can now compose music with Shy in the game and create ensemble pieces with other players. Pretty interesting stuff if you're into music creation. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be something interesting for you. Uh, again, it's only for Shy's. So instead of, you know, giving Shy's more abilities, they've made Shy kind of this, this very unique character that can play music and you can actually hear the music as you pass by the whoever's playing the, the, the song. Now, guilds who occupy territories will auto declare war on one another and maintain that deck throughout the occupation. So basically, if your guild wins uh, Calfion, it will auto declare on Medaya and Valencia and so on and so forth. So as long as that uh, you own that region, you will be at war with the guild who owns 
uh, Valencia, for example. Now, Kuno Succession also got some buffs, and they also added a guild recruitment window where you can uh, now apply for guilds if you do not have one. It's a better system than what we have now, which is nothing. But let's see how it works in practice. Should be, honestly, a positive change for all those looking to grow as guilds and also those players looking to join the right guild for you. Now, all of your channels have gone full Care Bear. That means no more forced PvP allowed. You can't Alt-C in uh, all of your channels anymore. That's to help new players grow without being griefed. You can still duel and use the arenas, but it seems that flagging up is no longer a thing on all of your channels to protect the players as they develop into what uh, BDO has to offer. I think it's a little silly, but I really don't think it changes anything as long as they don't spread that mentality to normal servers. I'm fine with whatever they want to do with Olvia to retain players. I guess they saw numbers dropping and maybe feedback was coming in that they were getting griefed by those people that, you know, always stay on Olvia. And uh, finally, if you're awaiting your succession for Berserkers out there, especially, uh, well, I'm sorry, I got some bad news for you. They specifically mentioned how Berserker needed more time uh, for development, so they're going to be delaying future successions to polish them and release them in a more finished manner. Um, that kind of sucks. That means uh, we're going to have a, a sort of time period where we're not going to see any more successions, and then probably the next one we'll see will be Berserker, uh, hopefully in mid-January. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Let me know what you thought about the changes in the comments down below. I'll try and get hands-on with Guardian, but it's going to take some time. Uh, BDO Guide series episode incoming, and the last episode of Starting Over is in the works, so it should be out on Christmas Day. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And don't forget to sub and like or dislike, depending on how your day is going. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.